Hi everyone, welcome to my next short video on C++ programming. In this video I will introduce to you uh, rather quickly the CN object and write a simple program uh, that gives you an example of how to use CN. Okay, um, So let's get started. All right. In C++ we have these things that are known as objects and you can think of objects right now as little robots that help us do things within our programs. Okay, We can give uh, the robots some instructions, some tasks, and then it'll perform some work for us. Okay, So with the CN object, what we're doing is we are taking input from the keyboard and we're going to have the CN object take that input and store it somewhere in the computer's memory. Okay, so this is the second part of I/O input output uh, with a C++ program. Uh, earlier, we took a look at using the Cout object to display output to the screen. Well, now we're going to use the CN object to get input from the keyboard from the user. Okay, so the way the process generally works is with the CN object is that the user inputs something at the keyboard, okay, and then that uh, input is taken by the CN object and stored somewhere inside the computer's memory. Okay, so let's go ahead and write a quick program to uh, show you how it works. Okay, all right, so here we go inside of code blocks and before we can use the CN object, we first have to bring it into our C++ program. And the way we do that is with this statement on line 5 here, include, pound include IO stream. Okay, that is a preprocessor directive, which basically copies all of the computer code into our program uh, at compile time that uh, gives us access to the CN object. Okay, it's what uh, puts the CN object into our program. Okay. So once we have that, we can um, get input from the user. Okay. So um, let's just start off with a simple example, and I'll show you some more, slightly more complicated examples in, in a minute or two. Okay. So let's say that we have a memory location in X. Okay. And let's say that I'm going to use the Cout object to uh, ask the user for an integer. Please enter an integer. Okay. All right. So now I can use cn and the stream insertion operator, this double chevron looking thing, um, to put the value inside of x. Okay. So x is going to be a memory location inside the computer. Okay. So this is going to be a string that is printed to the screen. Okay. And then this is going to be the object that uh, reads input from the keyboard and stores it in X. Okay, so CN is like our R2D2 from uh, the previous graphic, right? The user is going to type in something, R2D2 here, the CN object. He's going to grab that info from the keyboard and then he's going to determine where to st stick it, where to save it. And in this case, it's going to be inside the x variable. Okay. So let's finish up this program here. Okay. So I'll use C out again to uh, display the contents of x. Okay. And display the contents of x. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, run this thing. Oops. Build and run it. So, C out, the C out robot is asking us to enter, or is displaying entered integer, that string, right? It's sending that string to uh, output. And C in right now is waiting, R2D2 is waiting for us to give him an integer. Okay, so we'll give him five. He then stores that inside the X memory location here. And then the uh, C out object displays that to the screen. Okay, so. Uh, CN can be used this way uh, if we wanted to have multiple memory locations. 
what if I wanted to store more than one value? What if I wanted to store two integers? Well, there's a couple ways I can do that. Right? I can add a whole other CN statement. Enter another integer. Right? And then run that. Okay, here's the first integer will be eight. The second one will be two. Okay, I can do that. Okay, let me add another line here to show you that it actually stored it. Okay. So the first integer is going to go in X. The second integer, our, our, our R2D2, the CN object, is going to store it in Y. And there we go. They're both values. Okay. So I can have two separate CN statements, but I can also do something like this. Um, let's just delete this to the other way. Okay. I can also do this. C out enter to it's separated by a space. This is a perfectly valid code too. C N X Y. Okay, and then I'll uh, display the results here. Okay, so let's run this. Okay. So now um, I'm going to be able to enter in uh, both these values uh, with one CN statement. R2D2 is going to take them both and uh, store those values in their correct locations. I just have to make sure that I have a space separating the two. Okay, so five and eight. Okay, so I can combine uh, this input with just one statement. I can get two multiple values with just one statement. Right, and if I wanted to uh, get a third value, I can easily do that. I just keep adding variables. Just keep telling R2D2 to grab more and more stuff. All right. So let's do this here so you can see it. So you can see the work in action. Okay. In this case I'm gonna do three different numbers separated by spaces. Okay? So there we go. So R2D2 basically, you know, our CN object, uh, he grabbed the three values and then stored them in the correct memory location. Now, what if I wanted to grab different data types? Okay, this will work for integers, floats, characters, uh, strings, whatever. That's totally fine. Uh, what if I wanted to uh, take a double? And what if I wanted to take a character? Okay, well, I can do this. Um, C and D. Okay, I can mix data types in the same C and object. Okay, R2D2 is smart enough. When he reads that uh, input from the keyboard, he can determine what the data type is for each value, and then store them in their correct locations. Right. So X, Y, and Z are going to have to be integers. Right. C is going to be a character, and D is going to be a double. Okay, so I'm going to actually end up entering in five values, let's say five values here, separated by a space. Right, so I'm going to grab five things at once, all with one statement. Okay. All right, so ten, twelve, eight, um, nine point two, and z. Okay. I didn't show anything because I didn't modify my C out object. I didn't tell R2D2 the C out object here to uh, display the other two values. So let's 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 add that here. Okay. Oops. All right. All right. So now, if I do this. 1, 8, 9, for example, and then 8.7. Remember, floating point numbers, doubles, double data type or the float data type, um, they're the data types you use for storing decimal places. Ints can't. Okay. All right. So, and then the last thing that needs to be in here is uh, a, uh, a character. Okay, so a character and then a double. Okay, so there we go. Three integers, a character, and a floating point number. Okay.
Okay. So uh, it's important that you remember too the differences between uh, the integer data type and a floating point uh, variable data type. Okay. So uh, let's say let's let's let me show you an example of what I mean. Okay. So let's say that uh, I wanted to. Uh, I'm asking the user for an integer. Okay. Or yeah, or 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 floating point number. Let's say I'm going to ask them for a double. Okay, but I make this mistake and I decide to store it in an integer, in, in an integer value. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so I'll run this. Okay, if I enter just five, okay, every that's that's fine. Okay, because because integers hold integers, right? But let's say. And I decide that I'm going to enter in a double. Uh, let's say 8.2235. Okay, what what am I going to see here? Is it going to be rounded up? Is it going to be rounded down? What what, what are we going to see? Well, we're going to see eight. Why? Because integers cannot store the decimal places of floating point numbers, and a double uh, is a floating point number. Okay, so if we want to make sure not to lose that, we have to be sure that we are storing our input. In the correct data type. Okay, so if I instead of storing this into it in X, I store it into uh, double D here. Uh, D being a variable that is the data type of double, then I won't lose this stuff. I won't lose those decimal places. So 8.2225. Okay, see the difference there. So it's very important that you make sure that uh, the input that you're getting from the user is going to be stored in the correct place. Alright, so uh, in this short video I showed you how to use the CN object and I showed you a couple of pitfalls uh, for storing the uh, a value in the wrong variable data type. Right? You have to make sure those things, those things match up. Alright, so uh, as always, thanks for watching and if you have any questions, shoot me an email or stop by my office hours. Alright, great, thanks and we'll see you next time.